let's take a look at opportunities to practice training. Practice refers to physical or mental rehearsal of a task, knowledge, or skill to achieve proficiency in performing the task or skill or demonstrating the knowledge. Practice involves having the employee demonstrate the learned capacity, like cognitive strategy or verbal information, emphasized in the training objectives under conditions and performance standards specified by the objectives. Viewing examples helps learners develop a new mental model of skills which they can use in practice. Trainers need to focus not just on training content, but also on how to enable trainees to process information in a way that will facilitate learning and the use of training on the job. Before practice, trainers can do the following. Provide information about the process or strategy that will result in the greatest learning. For example, let trainees in a customer service class know about the types of calls they'll receive, like irate customers or requests for information on a product or a challenge of a bill, and how to recognize such calls and how to complete them. Encourage trainees to develop a strategy, metacognition, to reflect their own learning process. Metacognition refers to individual control over one's thinking. Two ways that individuals engage in metacognition are monitoring and control. Research shows that metacognition, including self-regulation, promotes learning. Self-regulation refers to the learner's involvement with the training material and assessing their progress towards learning. Learners who engage in self-regulation likely learn more effectively because they're able to monitor their progress, identify areas needing improvement, and adjust their learning. Provide advanced organizers, outlines, texts, diagrams, and graphs that helps trainees organize the information that will be presented and practiced. Help trainees set challenging mastery or learning goals. Create realistic expectations for trainees by communicating what will occur in training. When training employees and teams, communicate performance expectations and clarify the roles and responsibilities of team members. Learning will not occur if employees practice by talking about what they're expected to do. Trainees need to continue to practice even if they have been able to perform the objective several times, known as overlearning. The frequency of practice has been shown to influence learning depending on the type of task being trained. Massed practice conditions are those in which individual practice a task continuously without resting. Massed practice also involves having trainees complete practice exercises at one time within a lesson or class rather than distributing the exercises within the lesson. In spaced practice conditions, individuals are given rest intervals within practice sessions. Spaced practice is superior to mass practice in general. Overall task complexity refers to the degree to which a task requires a number of distinct behaviors, the number of choices involved in performing the task, and the degree of uncertainty in performing the task. Mental requirements refer to the degree to which the task requires the subject to use or demonstrate mental skills or cognitive skills or abilities to perform the task. Physical requirements refers to the degree to which the task requires the person to use or demonstrate physical skills and abilities to perform and complete the task. A final issue related to practice is how much of the training should be practiced at one time. One option is that all tasks or objectives should be practiced at the same time, known as whole practice. Another option is that an objective or task should be practiced individually as soon as each is introduced in the training program, known as part practice. It is possible to best employ both whole and part practice in a training session. Trainees should have the opportunity to practice individual skills or behaviors. If the skills or behaviors introduced in a training session are related to one another, the trainee should demonstrate all of them in a practice session after they've been practiced individually. For practice to be relevant to training objectives, several conditions must be met. Practice must involve the actions emphasized in training objectives, be completed under conditions specified in those objectives, help trainees perform to meet the criteria or standards that were set, provide some means to evaluate the extent to which trainees' performance meets standards, and allow trainees to correct their mistakes.